Hey guys and welcome back again to Brave Knight. As you can see we almost reached 10,000 subscribers which is a good thing. Thank you all guys for that. So today I'm gonna show you how to make a water battery. I saw this idea on internet and I'm really want to know if it's gonna work or not. It is actually might be useful in the future. I'm not sure about that because they didn't use it in real life so I, I guess it's just a life experiment for students or for kids and that's it. So. Now it's time to try it and see if it's worth it or not. So, all we're gonna need is some wires, small plastic cups, and some salt. And that's it. Now we have the basics. If you have this stuff, there is a high chance that you can do it. Oh, I forget to tell you, we also need water. After you have this stuff, now you need two things Cooper and zinc Cooper is easy to find it's like everywhere around you just you have to know where to look but zinc it's a little bit hard if you know someone have it or you know someone can bring it to you go for it but in my case I don't have zinc I don't know how zinc looks like there is an easy way to find zinc the way is all batteries yup you need batteries to make batteries. That makes sense, of course. Leave the zinc for now. Now let's focus on the cover. If you have one like this, it's called electric switch or whatever you call it in your country. If you open it, you're gonna find a lot of these things inside. And this is just a pure cover. See? How easy is that? Once you have enough cover, I can say now that the easy part is done. And now it's time to get some zinc. We need batteries. A lot of batteries. As you can see, I have two types of battery. The low quality one or the cheap ones and the better one. Because I really want to know the difference between them. So now it's time to open it and let's see what is inside it. To do that, all we're going to need is some tools, gloves, and eye protection glass and that's it Let the gravity do the hard work for you. This one with only one hit, we open it like that. Now use all what you have from tools and power to open them. I'm gonna start with this one. As you can see, it's open already. I guess it will be easy. But don't forget to use your gloves and your safety glass because what you are gonna see inside, it's not safe for you. Once you have this, there is a small tiny plastic vacuum plastic cover on top of this thing. So we have to remove it so we can open the battery and see what's inside it. And now we have carbon, manganese dioxide, Aluminium blade and zinc. Yeah, free stuff. I'm gonna throw these. I don't need them. The manganese dioxide, I don't know what to do with it, but I will keep it anyway. And the zinc, of course, we will keep it. So now we have to reveal the process for the, all the batteries that you have. Do you know the difference between this one and this? This one, the protection layer is very thick and strong and solid. Like this, and this one, like just a plastic paper or low quality aluminium see how light it is this is the protection side I can't even remove it like that now let's do a quick compare between energizer and the cheap low quality batteries the energizer shells it's thick and heavy and it's hard it's very hard to bend it with your hand and it's include all this amount of manganese dioxide inside each one of these I don't know how they put it all inside but they actually did it this way it lasts like forever the other side we have the sheep low quality batteries the shell it's very light 
and thin you can you can easily bend it with your hand yeah this way it's cheap and it's included just this amount of manganese see the difference after all this process this is the only thing that we got look at the difference this one the energizer battery it's completely pure zinc and the sheep batteries doesn't look the same it's ugly in the other side as you can see I tried to clean it like 100 times and this is the best I can get now I'm gonna cut them in half because I need 8 of them and finally we have zinc so now we have cooper zinc salt water and small wires and this is all what we need to make a battery I guess yeah so yeah let's do it now let me show you what we will gonna do we have now cooper and zinc if I were gonna use for example four cups of water each one will include a cooper and zinc just like that now we will gonna connect the cooper with the zinc just like that and here we're gonna put the multimeter to see where the positive and negative I don't know which side and this is what you're gonna do prepare your wires put in each wire zinc and cooper just like that and make two of them like this so now all what you have to do is get a cup put like 70% of it water add one spoon of salt twist it a little bit bring your multimeter to measure if there is any voltage you can get from this connect it like that you have to consider this cup as a cell so now I'm gonna use only one cell yeah let's try it let's put the other side whoops oh 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 look I got like a half volt oh like half volt I got some voltage so now let's put another cell we need more I will gonna use these to make sure it's not touching each other here we have cobalt so it needs zinc watch it it's the same voltage sure six point yeah there, there is a little bit it's it's increased a little bit now it's 6.9 before like 6.2 or 6.3 Th there is different i guess we have to make more cells okay now as you can see i made four more cells I need zinc and the other and cobalt on the other side then now as you can see it's 0, 0.00 zinc cobalt and now will be the result of four cells we're gonna see it right now <clears throat> oh, hoo, hoo. it's each two volt now yeah 2.4 volt that's good as you can see each side there is cobalt and zinc cobalt and zinc cobalt and zinc make sure that they're not touching each other that's better and cobalt and zinc as you can see now it's 2.6 or 2.7 make sure they don't touch each other on the water if they start to touch each other like that see there is a huge decrease let's try out six cells now first we have to remove this one last one it should be like three volts it should be 2.9 2.9 don't let them touch each other <sighs> that's it 2.79 with six cells if you made eight nine ten cells eleven cells you'd get more voltage 2.7 what can you run with three volt a small motor i guess small light i guess let's search okay let's see what do we have here interesting i have a lot of led lights this one might work i will try this one. Ooh. I have some motors here strong 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 this is the cheapest the weakest i guess it might work here 2.8 volt is enough for it right let's find out positive negative i will try with this one first i guess the left side is negative if i did it wrong it will burn anyway 
This video will gonna cost me this LED light because it will gonna burn right now. Oh, oh, it's working. Did you see that? As you can see, it is working. Look, there is no any batteries anywhere. Let's let's turn on the light. I will reduce the light a little bit. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Yeah. Let's turn off the second light. I oh, need lights now. I oh, need light. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Water LED light. Okay, let's let's try the motor, and then we will see how long this LED light will survive with this water battery. Okay, now let's put this one. But this one consumes a lot of energy, so I'm not sure he will survive long. Does it matter where is positive and negative? It didn't work. Motor is too strong for this project. Move, man. I can feel the ver small vibration inside it, but it's not moving. Maybe the motor is damaged. Yeah, who cares about this? Actually, it's, it's, it's trash. Let's try this one. The negative will be in the left side. Okay. Look. Yep, it's lighting with a water battery. If you want to measure the amps, if you want to know how many amps this water battery can make, can produce. Now everything is connected to measure the amp. It's like, wait, we can reduce it. It's like half amp. Okay guys, we only used 6 cells in this video and it's give me like 2.5 volt and this is not even enough to run anything to be able to run a small motor for example you need like 4 more cells and if you have enough cells to produce 6 volts you can charge your phone with it I don't have enough zinc right now to do that but if you have more zinc or you have time to destroy more batteries you can do more crazy stuff now it's time to know how long this battery will survive you know, if it is worth it, you might replace this one with all of that. This is mean that you will be able to make your own batteries for free at home without paying anything. Yeah, I know there is a big difference in the size compared to this one that you can put it in your pocket with all that. That you can even move it. But guess what? You have a free battery. What else you're gonna need in your life? Okay, now I connect both the LED and the multimeter. I will turn the multimeter on It's showing now 1.85 I will set the timer Start And now I will leave it This one might shut down After 5 minutes I don't know After 17 minutes We still have enough voltage To keep it on for more than a day So if you are in the desert and you only have two old batteries and you want to charge your phone so you can call someone to pick you up you can do this and boom your phone is charged from where did you learn that? from brave knight yeah exactly so don't forget to like subscribe and see you on the next video